All right, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take your photos uh, from the Aperture 6 assignment, the window light comic strip. And we are going to turn this into a comic strip. So I've got my photos here in Lightroom. And I want to start out by editing my photos that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go through and just do some edits on all of these. I'm not going to make you watch that. But one thing that I do want you to see is about cropping your photos. All of your photos probably should be cropped if they need it. So you guys already know how to edit. We won't go over that. But let's talk about the crop tool right here. You can see when I click on this, it's bringing this box up around here. And in my opinion, the less wide my photos are, the better. So if I can bring this in a little bit and still have it look good, I'm going to go for that. So I'm going to crop that one about like that. And I just press the Enter key to tell Lightroom I'm done cropping. Same thing here. I'll probably just bring this one in just a touch. And then like this one right here, I could bring this one in quite a bit. So again, I'll click on my crop tool, keyboard shortcut C. And that brings up my crop box. I'm going to actually bring this one in a lot. And then bring this down a little bit and just press Enter. And so I'm just going to go through and edit and crop all my photos until I get them looking how I want them to look. Okay, I got these guys cropped and edited and ready to go. Let's jump over to Photoshop now. Let's start out by coming up here and going to File, New, or just clicking on Create New right here, whatever works out easier for you. I'm going to make sure my uh, measurement here is set to inches. And then I'm going to use 20 for the width and 5 for the height, 300 for the resolution, and background contents should be set to white. And then go ahead and just click on Create there. The next thing I want to do is press Control r on my keyboard. That brings up these rulers right here. And then just right click on that. Make sure you're on inches, which I am. And then I am going to zoom in on my comic strip here a little bit. And I want to be able to see this left edge and then the top and the bottom of my panel. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and click right on this ruler right here. And I'm going to click and drag a line out of here. And I'm going to pull this down until that number that's right next to my cursor says 0 .250. Let's see if I can get that right on. I can get 0 .252. That's close enough. And I'm going to bring this one in also until it says 0 .250 or very close to it. There's 0 .254. I'll take that. And then this one right here until this one says 4.75 because remember this is 5 inches tall. So I'll get that very close as well. So that kind of gives me some guides that help me to be able to see where I'm going to be putting my photos. I'm not going to worry about putting one over here yet because I'm not 100% sure where my comic strip is going to end because where uh, the photos are going to go in is going to uh, have an impact here. So let's start adding some photos. I'm going to jump back to Lightroom real quick. And we're just going to do one photo at a time. You cannot export all of your Photoshop photos to Photoshop at the same time. If you have all of your photos selected like I do here, because you've been doing some edits to all of them, what you need to do is you need to click on nothing. Or actually, excuse me, press Control D on your keyboard. That will deselect all of your photos. So Control D there will do that. Then I'm just going to click on this first photo, press Control E. You can see up here it says opening in Photoshop. We just have to wait for that to happen. And here it is. I got it here in Photoshop. And so I'm not actually going to do anything here other than grab my move tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on this and drag this over into my other canvas and drop it in there. And it's obviously too big. That's okay. I'm going to do a little Control T. And wait, basically what we want to do is line this up with these grids right here. So I'm going to make take this top left-hand corner and click and drag that until it snaps in there. And then I'll zoom out a little bit more so I can see this bottom right-hand corner. Now I'll just click on this and drag this dude up until it's also lined up with that bottom blue line. And I might need to zoom in here, get it nice and close. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be close. That looks pretty good right there. So first uh, image in there. Let's go ahead and do another one. I'm actually going to come back here and close this because I don't need that open anymore. Okay, back to Lightroom to grab my next image. Click on this one. Control E. Here it is in Photoshop. Grab my Move tool. Click on it. Drag it over. Drop it in there. Same process as before. I'm going to put them right next to each other like that for now. And then I'm going to do Control T until I can resize this one. I'll get that to about the size I want. Which again, I'm going to line it up right with that blue line and then press Enter. And then I do want to zoom out here, grab my Move tool. And I'm going to move this. And I want this to be about 
2.5 inches away, or excuse me, 0.25 inches away. So this distance here should be about the same as this distance right here. And we'll get it close, and uh, that looks pretty good right there. I like it. Okay, I'm going to keep adding my photos until I run out of room here, and then I'll show you what we do once we run out of room. So I want to show you something. I'm adding this photo in, and you can see when I'm moving this photo from left to right, Photoshop kind of stops me and says, look at this. Your gap between these two photos is the same as that gap between those two photos, the first two photos. And so Photoshop is telling me that if I drop it right there, this gap and this gap will be the same size. That's actually really handy. So I'll control T this one and drop that into place. And you can see I'm running out of room here. I'm not going to have space for my next photo. So what I need to do is come up here and go to image and choose canvas size. And doing that brings this up. And it's, this is going to allow me to make my canvas bigger in any direction. These arrows are going up and down. These ones are going side to side. I'm only going to be changing the width. I want to change this thing to be 30 inches wide instead of 20. But I want all of the addition to go this way, go to the right. So I'm just going to click on this box right here, which moves the little circle over to the left and telling me that all additions that changing all additions to the width will go this way. If I was changing the height, then it would also change that way, but I'm not. So I'm just going to leave that right there. And then I do want to make sure that this is on white and press OK. 30 might be too big. We'll see when I get there. I'm going to go ahead and just keep adding my photos and we'll pick it up when I'm done. All right, so I got all of these in here and I didn't plan it this way, but I got really, really close to making this fit perfectly. And you can see I actually have just a touch too much of white there at the end. So I'm actually just going to grab my crop tool here. Keyboard shortcut is C to do that in Photoshop. Then I'm going to zoom in on this right hand side since that's where I want to make an adjustment to. And I'm just going to oh, come up here and make sure you click on clear before you do anything. You want these boxes to all be completely empty. I'm just going to click on this and drag this in. And again, I'm going to have to kind of ballpark this. Photoshop's not going to tell me where to do it, and that's okay. It may be right about there. It looks good. And I'll press Enter, and now I've got my comic strip panel, and it looks really, really good. All right, now all we need to do is add some text to our comic strip, and we are going to do that using our custom shape tool. That tool lives out down here at the bottom. It's usually uh, underneath the rectangle tool. The keyboard shortcut is U if you can't find it. And we're looking for the custom shape tool right there. And what that's going to do is going to pop this thing up here at the top. And what I want you to do is click on this little down arrow right here. Then click on this little gear icon right here. And you're going to import shapes. And <clears throat> go ahead and browse to the photo drive right here. And scroll down to the bottom. And you're looking for speech bubbles, shapes for free. Go ahead and just double click on that. And press load. I'm not going to do it because I've actually already loaded it. Loaded it twice, in fact. So here are our speech bubble shapes. And you can see you got quite a few to choose from. So these are kind of nice because when you click on these, then maybe I want to use this one. You can see I can drag this out and click and drag on it. And it automatically becomes its own layer, which is actually going to be helpful later on. So I'm going to switch to the Move tool, and I'm going to move this around. And actually, it turns out on this one, I want it facing the other way. So I might not use this one for that one. I Maybe I'll move it over here. And again, these are their own layer. So after the fact, you can just press Control-T. And you can resize it a little bit if you want it to fit a little bit better. And in this case, I want that one coming out of the camel's mouth. And maybe I'll come over here, switch to my custom shape tool again. And this time, uh, maybe I want my guy to be thinking in this one. So I'll click and drag right here and put that one right there. And just move this over so it fits inside that box. And if that doesn't quite work, maybe I'll delete it grab the one where he was thinking but it was facing the other way so that's that one right there and you know, that, that's gonna work much better Let me zoom in here and see it a little bit better and then to you move these I'm just switching to the move tool keyboard shortcut V and then just clicking and dragging and moving them to where they need to be uh, for my uh, for my comic strip so I'm gonna go ahead and drop all these in here and then I'll show you what we're gonna do after that Okay, so I got all my text bubbles in here. You can see I did some thought bubbles and some text bubbles. I kind of already had an idea of what I want my uh, characters to be saying. So now I'm going to start with this first panel. I'm just going to zoom in here, grab my type tool, and <clears throat> I'm going to come up here to the top of my screen and just choose a uh, pretty simple, easy to read font. In fact, this may be the only time in your entire life when it is socially acceptable to use the Comic Sans font. Pretty much any other time in your life if you use that, you're a terrible person. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use it. I'm going to click on that. I'm not sure what size I'm going to need. Let's start by just choosing, I don't know, 16. And I am going to want my text to be centered. And I do want it to be black. And then uh, I'm going to come down here. And because I'm going to be typing like a little bit of a paragraph, I do want to click and drag a box that my text is going to go into. Kind of like that. And I'm going to go ahead and just type my text. So there you go. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that. I don't like that. I'm just going to go with what's that I see over there. You can see, though, when I had that down there, see how part of my text disappeared? That means my text box was too small. And so I need to either make my text box bigger by clicking and dragging on that, or I need to get rid of some text. I also don't like how there's only one word on this line, so I'm going to just click right there. I'm going to press Enter just to move that down, throw a question mark in there, check my spelling. If everything looks good, I'll press the Enter key by the numbers, and then I can switch to the Move tool and move this around. That's a little small for me, so I'm going to switch back to my text tool, select this again, and make this just a touch bigger. We'll go... Size 20 seems to work great. And I'll use my move tool again, keyboard shortcut V to move that. I'm going to press and hold down the space bar to move my canvas over. I'm just going to click and drag. I don't want any talking on this one. I want this to be like an awkward moment when they see each other. And now the camel here is thinking. So I'll grab my type tool again, click and drag a box. And that's real small. I'm not sure how that got set to 2.88. So I'll type in here what I want the camel to be thinking. Please don't shoot me. And again, switch to the move tool to move it around. You could also resize it by pressing control T. And then just pressing the enter key. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding my text in and then we'll come back when I'm on. Okay, so here's a situation you might have. You can see I've made my text box here and I'm typing but I can't see anything and the solution to this is to come over and look at my layers panel. You can see this text layer is layer six and it is below speech bubble number 15. So it is hiding behind that speech bubble. So in order to get that to show up, I need to click and drag on this and move it above that speech bubble there. And now I can see that text and it's showing up. So if you're typing and you're not seeing something, check to make sure your layer position is correct. All right, so I'm just about done. I realize I made this last text box a little too big. That's okay. I'll switch to my move tool, click on this text box to select it. You can see that selected it in my layers panel. I'll control T that, and I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller. And that looks about right. And then I'll move my text. And I want that to be a little bit uh, of an empty box. Uh, I think that looks really, really good. So there is my finished comic strip. I've got my text bubbles. I've got my thought bubbles. I've got everything in here I need. Now all I need to do is save this and turn it in. So I'm just going to do a little file save. I'm going to make sure I'm saving this in my folder in the O drive. So here I am in my folder in period one. I made a new folder called comic book. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to call this finished comic and go ahead and press save. I am definitely going to save it as a Photoshop document because I have a ton of layers here. So I'll save that and press OK if anything pops up there. And then let's bounce back to Lightroom. This is not going to be in Lightroom, so I'm going to have to manually add it. I'm going to make sure I'm on my comic book album, which I am, and then I'll press the plus sign, and I'll go find that folder where I just saved this thing. And there it is, and I'll hit review for import. And you can see because I had the comic book album selected before I did it, it automatically selected it. It assumes I'm wanting to put this in the comic book album. And I'll hit add one photo. And there it is. And now all I have to do is select just this one photo and hit my share button and turn it in. And I'm good to go.